if Call of Duty was gonna die by the hand of another franchise, I think it would have happened already. Think about the Bad Company series, Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4, and even Battlefield Hardline, who kinda aimed at trying to be a little bit more fast-paced, a little bit more casual. All of the Halo games, the Titanfall games, and Destiny, and even after the immense success of games like PUBG and Fortnite, Call of Duty's maintained all of its player numbers. At least on console. PC doesn't count when it comes to talking about Call of Duty. I'm sorry, I've dealt with this on this channel enough. People say, Call of Duty started on PC, Blah. yeah well games started in an arcade, that doesn't mean they're meant to be in an arcade. Sorry, no. I have a lot of respect for PC COD players because they mostly play TDM and take forever to find matches six months into the game, but whatever, sorry, not sorry. But where most people play is on console and Call of Duty leads the charge or sits calmly behind the charge in the top 20 most played games on either console, mostly because it's the only game on console that delivers that sweet, silky twitch shooter action. As much as I love a variety of shooters, a lot of people don't, and even though I love a variety of shooters, I still recognize the fact that Call of Duty does Twitch Shooter really well. I'm sorry Titanfall, and I'm sorry other games, but I'm, Call of Duty just does it better. If you give them credit for one thing, it's the fact that they really tapped into that genre of shooter, and they, well, they beat the hell out of it, but I think they do it well, even when I don't like it. The Call of Duty games are kind of like the Marvel movies, even the weaker ones, they still do pretty well, and they're still enjoyable to watch, so it's kind of along those lines for me. It's like Black Ops 3 is one of my least favorite Call of Duties, but I still got to max prestige in it. But what will kill Call of Duty if not another franchise? If Fortnite can't do it, if Titanfall can't do it, if Halo and Battlefield and all the Gears of War games can't do it, what is going to do it? I can tell you right now what's going to do it. Well, at least my idea. I mean, I have ideas about how every game franchise could die, and if I sat here for about 40 minutes, I could kind of work through all of them with you. An example of that would be the fact that I think if Kingdom Hearts, after Kingdom Hearts 3, just starts pumping out Kingdom Hearts games like Wild, every two to three years, we get another Kingdom Hearts game, like a major console release, I think they're going to run out of ideas, and they're going to start running out of characters, and they're going to just kind of burn out. So hopefully they take a nice long break after 3 again, and then come back when I miss them. And I always miss them. I always miss them. But I think if Call of Duty developers and Activision wanted to get together and come up with a big boogeyman word in order to figure out what might kill their beloved Twitch shooter baby, I think it would be the term overcorrection. Call of Duty World War II and Black Ops 4 are great examples of overcorrection. And I'm not going to say these games are bad, I haven't even played Black Ops 4 at this time. I've just seen an insane amount of information about it, I've read about it, I've watched videos on it, I've watched streams. I get, I get Black Ops 4. It's Call of Duty with its own set of gimmicks, but it's still a good example. So if you're swerving off the road in your car, the last thing you want to do is grab the steering wheel and then just fucking turn opposite to the skid as hard as you fucking can. That's a really quick way to land in the ER or in the morgue. Let's pretend that the Call of Duty is dying narrative is a real thing and no one's playing it anymore, it's not one of the top selling games in the world anymore, nobody's excited for it, nobody plays it, nobody cares anymore. Okay, so that's our proverbial slide off of the road. Now, Activision and all the developers are sitting in the driver's seat, whatever, and they're swerving off the road. The thing is, I think Call of Duty World War II was a complete overcorrection. Yes, people were tired of these new fangled advanced movement Call of Duties, cyborgs, spaceships, exosuits, we were tired of it. What was once of Breath of Fresh Air started to taste like poison. So they decided to take the franchise back to World War II and make one of the most generic, forgettable Call of Duties of all time. And with like every update they do to the game and every event, they introduce one new cosmetic that makes it feel less like a World War II game. Like, I don't care about women soldiers because I guess, you know, you want your players to have agency over their characters in game. It helps market to them. And multiplayer is a community event anyway. Anybody can come in the ball pit. Don't come in the ball pit, that's gross, but you can come into the ball pit. That's fine, but animated camos and red dot sights and zombie slayer uniforms, I think it's just a bit much for me. Doesn't ruin the gameplay or anything, it's just a little bit weird. So you have like this boring game with a bunch of like non-fitting cosmetic choices and it's kind of strange. And then with uh, Black Ops 4, it's trying to copy off the homework of other shooters, which I think is fine because every shooter copies off the homework of other shooters in one way or another. 
but trying to be this like team tactical thing that also has a battle royale mode, it's kind of like a Fortnite thing, a kind of like a Rainbow Six thing and an Overwatch thing going on. I think that's a conflicting design philosophy to what Call of Duty is, which is a game that benefits from teamwork no matter what, but really is a sucker punch Twitch shooter that people play to kick ass. And like the design philosophy of like not really counting your kills, but instead counting your elimination and damage dealt, like I, I just don't think that's Call of Duty. Call of Duty isn't about, wow, you know, I didn't do that well, but I sure did help my team. Like, oh, good for you. Go play Battlefield. This is like a complete deviation from why I play Call of Duty. I don't play Call of Duty to help my buddies. I do that anyway by being decent at the game. Oh, I'm sorry about the bot gameplay. I couldn't find matches. I couldn't find any matches in most of these and I didn't want to look for them and I need to get this gameplay quickly, so I apologize. I have like three excuses there, so fuck off. But either way, I don't really think that Call of Duty needs to go down this team tactical everyone work together route. I just don't think that's what the community will really want in the end, especially the more casual parts of it. The competitive players might like it, some of the YouTubers might like it, some of the Rainbow Six fans and people that went to more complicated shooters might like it, but for me, I'm just like, hey, I play Call of Duty for the sucker punch twitch shooter nature of it. I mean, my dad was the one that pointed that out to me. He was watching me play it downstairs and he's like, the game is just a sucker punch. You take people out before they can react, you get taken out before you can react, and it's about pounding people into the dirt. It's about making them hate themselves at the end of the match, and that's kind of the fun of it. It's always been that way, and trying to turn that into some sort of like, we all gotta work together, you know, we all gotta pair our abilities and have team composition, and it's like, eh, I don't think so. I mean, I don't like the fact that like old Call of Duty's allowed like tryhards to just run like a certain class setup and then just like kind of base rape the enemy team for hours and hours or you know like two minutes until the game's just over, you know, chopper gunner to the nuke kind of thing. This shit's annoying. I, I do think that like spawn trapping people on nuke town with an LMG makes you actual scum, and I don't think bullying should be in Call of Duty because I, I consider that type of gameplay bullying. It's not even fun. You're just removing the enemy's ability to play. And that's just, just, ugh, who cares? I hate it when it happens to me and I hate doing it. It just doesn't feel fun. There's no back and forth to it. It's like, it's like, it's like base camping in Battlefield. It's like, it's just stupid. Okay, so what I'm saying is, is maybe going back to the past of Call of Duty and trying to make something more slimmed down and smaller and simpler, and, you know, kind of more reminiscent of the old times or trying something so new and so drastic and also a little derivative Maybe both of those things are the wrong way to go about it. Maybe releasing a Call of Duty with no pizzazz isn't the best idea, and releasing one that kind of messes with the identity of the franchise isn't a great idea either. Maybe those are overcorrections, and as much as I don't get the people that continuously ask for Black Ops 2 Remastered, the reason people say like, give us Modern Warfare 2 Remastered and Black Ops 2 Remastered and you just remaster old CODs, is because I think what they want is something along the lines of Call of Duty Ghosts, or Black Ops 2, or Advanced Warfare, or Black Ops 3, hear me out. The reason that gameplay has been in the background, sorry about the bots again, but the reason that's in the background is because these four games are a great example of how to play with the Call of Duty franchise. Black Ops 2 was subtly different from other games, like subtly different from other Call of Duty games. In aesthetics, in customization, in map design, in objective design, and the competitive nature of it. Like it was the most customizable and most competitive, which is a weird, weird balance to strike. Call of Duty Ghosts echoed the design philosophies of Modern Warfare, Black Ops 1, and Modern Warfare 2. I said those in the wrong order, but you get what I mean. The bigger, more complicated maps, the interactable and destructible environments, and the fast time to kill low recoil weapons. It was echoing like the Modern Warfare games with some elements of the Black Ops game, like the original Black Ops. And it had a lot of new things to it. Unfortunately, its aesthetic was its biggest detractor in my opinion. You can complain about it all you want, but I think the game is almost flawless to me. I love it, but it's ugly as sin. It's, it's dreary, it's boring. If it actually had some color and some real personality to it, instead of just being this kind of washed out gray Call of Duty, that'd be great. And then Advanced Warfare came along and kind of copied a lot of the design philosophy from Black Ops 2, but added a bunch of verticality. And verticality was a breath of fresh air at the time. And it was such a breath of fresh air to me, I prestiged 30 times in that game. Just off of that breath of fresh air. Because it was so new at the time. And then Black Ops 3 comes around, and the reason I got to max prestige level 200 whatever, was because, again, it was like a breath of fresh air. 
I don't love the specialists, and I'd love to rework some of them, but specialists were new! And, and wall running was new, and the maps being designed around wall running, and this new thruster movement, and power sliding... It was, it was interesting and innovative, and you could suddenly put six attachments on one gun. Like, it was a fun, a fun innovation, even if I don't love the game anymore. I, it was a fun innovation. The reason I don't mention Infinite Warfare is because it took a lot of cues from Black Ops 3. I don't mention Modern Warfare Remastered because that was a remaster of a game from 2007. And COD World War II is the example of the boring, and Black Ops 4 might be the example of the too extreme. That was a mouthful. Let me tie my point up with a little bow here. Look, I think that if Call of Duty overcorrects to being, you know, the nitty gritty roots of Call of Duty boots on ground World War II, or it doesn't even have to be World War II, but just if it goes that way of just being super simplistic, just the boiled down distilled version of Call of Duty, I don't think that's a good idea. And, and trying to cheat off the homework of other shooters and going off into trying to change the, the gameplay philosophy behind COD, I don't think that's a great idea either. It's possible to play within the franchise without removing what makes the franchise the franchise that people buy. I know that I'll get tired of any Call of Duty that doesn't feel like Call of Duty, and I also know I'll get tired of any Call of Duty that thinks that the only reason I'm buying it is because it's called Call of Duty. So, that's this video. If you made it to this point in the video, well, that's great. You're supposed to get to the end of videos before you comment. That's how it's supposed to work. If you're not hearing this and you've already commented, you're a bad boy. And unfortunately, or a bad girl, but you're, you're bad. You're bad. You're just bad. And you won't be hearing this because you've already commented, maybe clicked away. So, fuck you. But yeah, hopefully this video made sense, and hopefully you guys got something out of it, and you start a discussion in the comment section. These types of videos aren't me telling you what is what. This type of video is to try to trigger some sort of conversation. So, there you go. I think that Call of Duty doesn't need to overcorrect in one direction or the other. I think they can just kind of play around within the franchise, and innovate within the franchise without making it feel like something that isn't the franchise. Novel idea, I know. See you when I see ya. Goodbye.